Thank you very much to the organizers for these, uh, this um, colloquium and especially Professor Lefday for his invitation. Uh, sorry for my English, I tried to do my best, so be patient with me, please. Um, this paper I present today is about the motorsports hero, Michel Vaillant, who is very famous in, in France. And I present today this because I, I am part of a research project in which I have the opportunity to collaborate alongside with my colleagues, Professor Christian Vivier and uh, Sébastien Lafasse-Cosnier, both from the Laboratory Culture, Sport, Health and Society from the Faculty of Sport in the University of France Comté in France. So first of all, I would like to give you some background about um, previous publication that we have done in this, in this team. Uh, first is about European studies in sport history and the representation of sport in comics, which is large. And a final recent one with also my former PhD supervisor, Teresa gonzalez Aja, so may, many of you maybe know, um, from the University of Madrid in Spain, uh, in the Spanish journal Materiales para la Historia del Deporte, in which we uh, try to analyze um, sport in the Smurf, and especially with about doping. And uh, well, um, today I will present a communication where the comics um, are part of a cultural life of young people. And we found that sport occupies an important place in these comics. So we try to answer some questions about what are the real messages that this series convey to its young readers, and what is the impact on them and the social role that they play in their lives, and especially what is the author's young raton um, values held by uh, during this um, series. So as part of this research, um, we analyzed Michel Vaillant's car driver's comic books, and we have been studying the first 16 albums, so uh, of this series was perfectly reflected of the 60s uh, period. So the first one was published in 1959, uh, and the last one just yes, 10 years after. But of course, it's still publishing. So Michel Bayan was published the first time in Tantan Journal, Belgian one, at the pace of two pages of comic book per week. The series has been translated into 15 languages and was sold to 2 million people, so it's 2 million copies, so it's really um, <coughs> a very famous and important work. So the analysis we propose and analyzes the comic book, book based on the establishment of a mass culture dedicated to the automobile brings the need to maintain traditional and bourgeois values. Nevertheless, these comic books reflect a detailed knowledge of the sport automobile feel an industry which grew with leaps and bounds during the post-war boom. The car in these comics books symbolizes modernity, like speed or innovation, and is shown as shaping the new liberal economic world, and in future in which young people, and mainly male, uh, could see themselves. So for that, in a uh, very good day in Banfield's recent article on revisited methodologies, for the history of sport, the garden, the acceptance of historical narratives and with many different modes of expressions, and one of them include comic as fictive or literary <coughs> source, given its power as a cultural force in shaping people's understanding of the world, and I quote. Unquestionably, the comic books is drawn literature, and as such, it should be analyzed using the drawing and the text which give together many links. So for that, for analyzing comics, we use several complementary analysis methods, so documentary, of course, but also plastic, context, iconic, and linguistic. So the success of Michel Vaillant was founded in several, on several factors. On the one hand, the series used plots that were permitted by the atmosphere of modernity and development of the sport automobile. On the other hand, it appeared uh, in a, at a particular moment in the history of the Francophone co uh, comic when one of the missions was educational in nature. So it was interestingly enough, the single life story of Jean Graton, the author, that added considerably to the fame of reputation of this series. So talking about him, Jean Graton was born in 1923 in Nantes. She was influenced by his father, who was a passionate for motor sports. And in fact, his father frequently organized motor races. Uh, Jeanne, when she has, since she has 12 years old, she used to attend 24 hours of Le Mans. At the same time as seeing George de Motor World, he also started drawing. Obviously, he drew motorbikes and cars mainly. 
He was a talented cartoon designer because the first cartoon was published at the age of eight in an important Belgian journal. Thanks to these two conditions, he will turn into famous cartoon designer of motorsports. After working for Journal Spu, he joined the competence and began working for Journal Tentin. This journal is interested in mechanical innovation as shown by the special number of aviation of automobile. Tintin knows a great success in France. It has <coughs> between 100 and 350,000 copies. It is read by children aged between five and 16 years old from the middle classes. In Tintin, uh, Jean Cardon began with short stories of four pages on the topics with auto racing and motorcycle races, but also all the sports, as you can see here in the slide, um, regarding cycling, basketball, boxing, ice hockey, rugby, American football, and even sailing. Through these short stories, Jean Graton becomes well known within Tintin. It was in 1957, in the first short episode of Michel Vaillan, published in this journal, and only two years later, we have its own volume called The Great Challenge, Le Grand Défi, you can see here. Jean Graton uses as method a very classical drawing, you can see here, <coughs> using 12 boxes layout, very geometrical, let's call it a waffle model. This process doesn't perturb young readers, this is really important to, to understand how it's gone. And as a compliment, uh, there is no doubt that the work of Jean Graton is in the logic of this period using a lot of text. As you can see here in the caption where it's not speech bubbles, you can see maybe here, yes, over here, and also in the speech bubbles. And we understand why Jean Graton is faithful to the text to please parents. Comments are very numerous and the speech bubbles are full of text. And you, if you see the proportion, there's a lot of text, even if it's, we're talking about a kind of series. Um, the importance, as I already said, of the text reassure parents because they say this is not comic serious literature, they read a lot. But even more, the content of Michel Vaillant's is educational and informative for young readers who are immersed in the reality <coughs> of modern mechanics. As a great expert of modern sport, Jean Graton draws Michel Vaillant as realistic as possible. Here, for example, he took inspiration for a start of race of the 24 hours of Le Mans practically the same image. Jean Graton boxes are real windows through which young box explore the plans of the various circuits, the techniques of the route, or even the historical monuments uh, of the cities visited by the hero. In the end, from reality to representation, the adventures shown in his albums reveal what motorsports mean to the eyes of a connoisseur artist. Breton did not, however, content himself with merely <coughs> reproducing uh, the enthusiasm of the period for car racing and for the French automobile. He went beyond the realm of a sport and strove to educate his readers about motorsports and its economic challenge. This model prepared his young readers for the challenges, for the changes and challenges and modernity of the 60s. So after this first part, in which I introduce the author and, and, uh, and its work, I will continue with the second level of analysis of Michel Vaillant's comic books, focused on how the automotive industry is reflected in Michel Vaillant, and how it was also a symbol of an historical period in France, totally marked by the economic and industrial race. Indeed, we must say that in the period chosen for the analysis, the car symbolizes both the success of mass consumption for middle class, but also a way to have social distinction. We are in the context of the train glorious uh, between the Second World War and the crisis of the 70s, where the French country is going to reach the highest peaks of dynamism, investment, and expansion. For this part, we have used another method. We have used analyzed from a quantitative perspective the total of topic cases, or panels, or, or boxes in, in the comic, but we can find in this corpus, which is 16 first volumes, and it means a total of 1,211 um, panels or, or boxes. We have created topic items that will result in five main categories, as you can see here in the slide. First of all, the representation of motor sports and racing cars. 
Secondly, the, sec the cases or the boxes when the car symbolizes a product of consumption. Thirdly, the presence of all the known motorized sports. In the fourth case, the family content of the hero, the family Vayan, because I have to say, um, Michel Vayan was a driver, but also the owner of his own car company. So it's a family uh, firm like all the French companies at that time. And a final category called others in which, well, we have um, added differ diverse topics of intrigues, um, like political issues or affairs. If we compare um, the five categories through the 16 volumes, we can appreciate that the intrigues regarding motor sports, as you can see here, black line, and also the currency consumption, you can see here, family environment, are all along the, the, the 10 years of the decade. The car as a product of consumption, as you can see here in the yellow, you see here overload, not very frequent, but also is a complement to the car races like in here in the 12 volume, which I underline here. And it's interesting the way on only in the albums when the intrigue is not centered on racing or sport racing, we find that the other topics like political issues, like about here, is more present. Facing the situation, um, the French car industry should be competitive, effective, and innovative. This change will allow the French companies to successfully pass the test of opening borders to the common market. It is essential to note that the French automotive, automobile industry made at that time a truly extraordinary effort to export even 50% of its production. Michel Vaillant clearly uh, reflects this dynamic in car industry and international competition, as we can see in the example of the rivalry between American racing driver, Steve Warson, who is the highest rival of the French driver, Michel Vaillant. This rivalry <coughs> between the two men uh, characters reflects also a rivalry between the, the car industries at both sides of the Atlantic, as well as two different cultures opposing the new and the old world in any case, what Bayan wants to show is how well prepared and efficient is the French industry against the big American economy. In addition to this, to this representation of the industry fashion international competition, and of course through the uh, sport competitions, the car is enhanced by its technical qualities and its aesthetic values. So this idea is broadly reflected in Michel Bayant. In the first example, uh, with, you can see how the car company is planning brand new ideas and prototypes to improve their cars. Well, here in the second example, uh, when the company of the driver here must face industrial espionage. Or even in the third example here below, the button, when French cars are represented as leader of a high technology industry against this reliability of the German cars. So all these technological innovation developed and tested in racing cars were quickly implemented in normal vehicles, thus bringing the opportunity to Mr. Average to enjoy the Catenet's technical improvements in their own cars, as we are going to see in this, in this third part. During this period, the car became a product accessible to the middle class, and in this case we can say the car is presented one of the most powerful symbols of democratization. This is clearly illustrated in Michel Vaillant adventures when our hero uh, has to face the executive board of his company and defend the idea of lowering the price by 5% of their cheap model Vaillant 1200, sorry, in order to make it more accessible to the people. So we are in the period of advertising, popular cars, also financial credit aids, and the economic growth of the glorious years in France that motivated popular classes to buy cars. Media, media democratization and the effects of a more visual society were also present in Michel Vaillant. This observation is not surprising given the spectacular nature of motorsports and the enthusiasm it provoked from the crowds. We provide here some examples from, from different media. Um, firstly, the reference to the cinema are really significant. Um, in this case, Michel Vaillant uh, was recruited to be the stand of a lead actor of a pate film production, 
uh, for uh, running different dangerous stunt scenes. And the increased presence of motorsports <coughs> events on TV made the sport meets of speed and youth more accessible to all. Michel Bayan became part of this through the victories and the representation of the sport champion. In 1964, Graton's idea to associate car races and cinema <coughs> maybe could be premonitory. In the album of Les Cascus, Michel Vaillant was immersed in the world of cinema, like some years after Steve McQueen in 1971, when he turned the race car driver in the movie Le Mans by Lee Katzin, and also wrote, for example, the example of the weekend of a champion uh, about Jackie Stewart in, in the film of Ron Polanski and Frank Simon. So these comics, like the comic Michel Vaillant, associate youth, speed, and challenge. Besides TV and cinema, a third made it focus on car innovations and attracting consumers, which is the press. It is widely represented in the Vian series, often in the first page of its album, when the daily newspapers presented the plot. Thus, the mass media was omnipresent in Michel Vian series, showing the ties which existed between motorsport and press, television, films, and even radio. So now I'm going to present the final part um, of our research, uh, of our analysis, that is focused on the myth molded by Michel Vaillant. Jean Graton had perfectly captured a living myth of this contemporary world, which is the speed. Michel Vaillant and his exploits enabled young readers to explore the universe of speed and racing cars and to live it in their vivid imagination. The research of our plastic analysis show, on the one hand, that the speed is emphasized by using dynamic and blue lines. On the other hand, Jean Graton, here in this image at the bottom, uh, probably influenced by the presence of slow motion on TV, uses a chrono decomposition of a spore movement. The iconographic analysis shows that Michel Vaillant's album highlights the increase in the speed capacity of these motorized vehicles, with the increase also of the power of the heavy-duty engines as well as extreme speed, as you can see in these examples when they want to uh, arrive to the sound barrier and, and, and teach it and take it. Uh, but Michel Vaillant was also, and especially the incarnation of the myth of speed during the 60s. But finally, at the end of the 60s, brought with it the end of the belief in which perpetual pro progress of a man. In this, in this case, the modern myth of unbroken progress meets the ancient myth of Prometheus, as in the last uh, volume we have um, studied, number 16, and published in 1969, where it seems that the limits are reached. Michel Vaillant found himself obliged to accept his limit, or in other words, to adjust to driving a vehicle which itself could not go faster, having reached its own limits. This symbolizes how the benefits of mobility contrast with the many painful physical, ecological, and moral transformation could, um, could bring uh, the mobility and pose in other forces, be they human or mechanical. So as conclusion, and after this study, we can define two major levels of analysis of the Jean Graton work <coughs> in the 60s. Firstly, the celebration of speed and cars, which reflects the rise of the French car industry. And secondly, the presence of myths to reassure a concerned French youth facing a coming future marked by significant economic changes and the opening of the market. These two levels are inseparable, and this is what we have tried to apply for an original approach that fully owns to visual studies. Just an epilogue, and just to show you and to illustrate what is the um, nowadays impact and, uh, and the cultural influence nowadays still in Michel Vaillant's in motorsports. Um, here one of the examples, uh, a recent recreation of Team Vaillant for the 24 hours of Le Mans uh, from a BMW double model and the Swiss team Rebellion Racing that will participate next June at uh, the 24 hours. But maybe the most paradigmatic influence of Vaillant in French driver Alain Prost, who was one of the 80s professional Formula One drivers that all we know. 
And as Post said and revealed in the preface of a special issue in 2008, and that you can see here um, part of the excerpt, uh, it was thanks to the comic of Jean Raton, who in fact became a close friend, you can see here a picture with two together, that he discovered the world of motorsports and he realized that his dream was to become a sports car driver, just like his hero. Thank you very much. Sorry? What, what were the author's politics? What is the author politics? Yeah. Well, he, he, was, uh, he was a friend who went to, f went to Belgium to, um, to, to live in, in, in Belgium. <laughs> and uh, I, I really don't know what is a politician, but it was, um, it was always considered like very um, conservative. Because also the... Um, the image that he transmitted through the Michel Vaillant. Michel Vaillant um, is a hero who is, of course, bourgeois. He's a, it, it came from a, a very good family. And uh, all through these stories, not only especially about sport, but for the rest of the topics, um, he represents a typical traditional family, uh, not only because the uh, type of model of, of, of company, of firm, familiar firm, but also about uh, he was, yeah, like very traditional values. It was considered, and Jean Cotton, I think, is considered like that. I, I really don't know what is exactly the uh, political is that. But it's quite interesting that we, all, we have debated a lot about um, why Jean Cotton, even it's Michel Vaillant, is considered like very conservative, uh, traditional, very bourgeois values. Um, at the same time, he I th uh, we, we try to interpret that, why at that particular moment, um, he tried to be very modern in the way that he's uh, showing us or showing the, the young people, even if it's most of the uh, readers are <coughs> male, um, a, a path or a, a way in which um, youth and in which um, <coughs> mobility, in which having a car, it also represents <coughs> myth also of freedom or liberty. And this is not exactly very uh, traditional conservative value. Uh, so I think we are in this dichotomy. And with Jean Graton, even if, well, we consider this kind of Jean Graton, uh, Michel Vaillant is quite traditional, it is at the same time very modern and he tries to explore all these all this myths um, transmitted by the by the sports, uh, motor car, motor, motor sports car. What were the implications of what you were trying to do? Uh, well, I'm just thinking, I, I wonder to what extent the, the, the author of these kind of things is trying to reinvent uh, a new tradition of French motorsport, which you need for a period is very much associated with right wing politics, as with much of motorsport. So it, it, it just seemed more kind of bourgeois, yes. middle of the road. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that was really interesting. And uh, congratulations on being able to present in your third language as well as you did. So, thank you. Which makes my question possibly a little difficult for you to explain. Do not. I will try. <laughs> yes. What is the difference between plastic analysis and iconographic? Well, it's, um, it's all about the visual studies uh, methodology. Um, with the plastic analysis, with the examples, for example, I, 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 give, I gave about, um, I can show you here, maybe sure. so this plastic and, and the um, techniques that the author uses, for example, with these blue lines or the way that in, in the image is reflected um, an intention, what is the use of, of the plastic elements. And the iconography is more the, inter well, as I, I try to understand, it's more the, uh, the interpretation and the symbolism that this, um, this image wants to, wants to transmit. 
So it's, it's another level of, of, uh, of uh, interpretation. So, so it's more iconography. So plasticist technique. Yeah. It's more technical. What is the uh, intention of the colors and also the, the way the different elements are put into the image? But iconography is more about symbolism, what that, that symbols means. For example, I don't, I don't know if we have here one of these, but I also use it. Um, we don't have here, well, that I can explain to you. The, uh, the logo the, is something that we are now um, trying to work on as a later um, working as about the um, more marketing analysis in the brand personality um, in Michel Vaillant. Because, for example, the logo is a V, uh, like <coughs> Vaillant, but also a victory. So we're trying to analyze both from the plastic, which is more technical, what is the comic technical uses, but also what is the intention of that, what is transmitted, because he used the three colors is always present, three colors of the flag of France, so it's also kind of identity and and, and, and we still that. So, small this intention. Okay. I'm interested in your wider research. I, I saw you talk about, um, I think it was Flo, the female um, comic book in which she continues to try to be successful at school, but ultimately failed. And yeah, failed. in Leicester, yeah. Uh, okay. and yes. The kitchen, if you like. Yes. Um, and in terms of the male comic books, clearly it's more forward-looking, technology, trying to strive for something. Is this something that's coming out over and over again in the research that you're doing in, in all comic books? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, it's, well, I, I, I will be very difficult to, to, to compare both uh, Florida, which is the Spanish um, uh, comic that you are talking about and I presented on, on Leicester, and, and the story of Michel Bayan, because there are con different contexts, even if it's a little, Ten years after Michel Vaillant, that is in France, which is absolutely different, and the context of uh, of Spain at that time, as you maybe all know, is absolutely different. Uh, but it's still, and it would be very interesting because I, as I told you, also I'm go we are going to compare the very exact same comic books uh, done by the same author, uh, this Spanish author in France. Uh, we are still analyzing, I'm sorry not to give more information about that. Uh, trying to know if this is a perpetuation, even if it's not about the, the country, but yeah, the, um, the, the gender um, um, yeah, uh, representations and the, uh, so yeah, but uh, we are still working on that. Okay. Do you analyze the text? Yes. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, it's not, not only um, the image, but also, of course, the, the text. And that's why we, we, we created the five categories about the plots of the topics. So it, is the f it was the first step to try to um, put into <coughs> different topics what is Michel Vian really talks about. Um, and it was more about the documentary of the, um, the real literature, the, the text. Uh, of, of the analysis when we find more bourgeois or uh, conservative uh, elements. But uh, when we go to the, um, to the image, the plastic and iconographic uh, analysis, it was really that um, it was beyond the, uh, this conservative, um, sorry. I think that means your time's up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I th our interpretation is that it's not only the, uh, he wants to give yes, uh, or he wants just to transmit his values, but also, um, you know, in the in the uh, in the period that the, the man wants to um, go beyond, and it maybe implies to take risks and to and to not to to maintain the same the same values. So this is how we how we see, but both um, compare compare making the comparison between text and, and image. Okay, we thought there we go. So. Thank you.